Hey, how's it going? So this is the easy way to understand how the SHSAT is scored. So I'm gonna go through the easy way to understand this, and then I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into the explanation and show you really, really how they grade the SHSAT and why you might have certain people tell you certain things that conflict with what other people tell you. Um, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. But the easy way to understand the SHSAT and the quick way to think about it is uh, here are some, first off, here are some terms you're going to have to be aware of. The raw score, scaled score, composite score, and just a normal bell curve. And we'll talk about why a bell curve is important in the complex explanation of the SHSAT score. So just to break it down simple, the ELA section has 57 questions total. 47 of them are real questions. 10% are experimental questions. And these experimental questions are not graded. They are mixed into the 47 real questions. And m most of the time, I'm guessing, you won't know that you're answering an experimental question. They throw them in there to kind of learn about the student body and see what concepts they know or don't know. But they don't grade these experimental questions. So really, they only care about how many you get out of the 47 real questions. Same thing with math. There's 57 questions total. 47 of them are real questions that matter and go towards your grade. 10 are experimental, which just kind of give the, the, the city more information about what kids know and don't know. So let's talk about the raw score. This is the first term from here. So... Basically, the raw score is what you're used to seeing in school. It's the number correct out of 47, and then for math, it's the number correct you got out of 47. This is the most straightforward way to see scores on SHSAT. Then there's the scaled score, and this is where you get it out of 800. For each section, it's out of 400. So you take the raw score and you multiply it by 400. So let's say in the ELA section, you got a 47 out of 47. Multiply that by 400 you get a 400 for the section. If you got a zero out of 47 for the ELA, you're gonna get a zero. Likewise, if you got 39 questions correct, your scaled score for the ELA section would be 332. The scaled score is out of 400, remember. So an example of raw scores for the ELA and math section, let's say you got a 40 on your ELA and a 36 in your math, the scaled score for those sections would be 340 for ELA and 306, just about, I had to round up a little bit, 306 for the math. What the composite score is, is the score that the schools look at. It is your ELA scaled score plus your math scaled score. So for this previous example where you got 40 and 36, you would add them up and your composite score would be 646. That is the easy way to understand how they score the SHSAT, and if that's all you wanted, then chill. Then <laughs> you don't need to do any more. But I'm gonna show you uh, why it's so complex to uh, scale or to score the SHSAT. First thing you gotta learn is what a normal bell curve is. So this top bell curve is classic bell curve, right? So up here, we're measuring the number of students. Up here is a lot of students. And down here is not that many students. And then here, we're measuring their raw score. This would be a 50%. This would be a 47 out of 47. And this would be a 0 out of 47. So notice where the most amount of students are, right in the middle. That's what they want. They want a ton of students getting 50s and 60s and 70s and 30s and 40s. This is what they're looking for as far as the perfect SHSAT test or a section of the test. However, there are different types of bell curves. This one is skewed a little bit right. It's an easier test because if you look, the bulk of the students get 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, even a bunch get 90s, you know? So this was obviously a very easy section, be it an ELA section or a math section. Sometimes you get a really hard section and the majority of the students are gonna have not a great grade. So most students here got 40s and 30s and 20s and only even the smartest kid in class really only got a 75%. So because they want this, 
And sometimes the section is easy and sometimes the section is hard. They have to do what they call calibration and scaling and how the raw score is scaled. So let's say this is the ELA section for test form A. And let's say your buddy in the same class got test form B. They don't give the same test to every single student. Uh, so let's say that you got this test A and it was a hard section, right? Most of the kids got about a 50%, a 40%, 30%, but you've been studying and you got a 51%, which, you know, isn't great really, but compared to the rest of your classmates in the section, you're better than average because average is about a 45% here. Let's say in this hard test, or I'm sorry, in this really easy test, right? They get a really easy ELA section with a bunch of super easy comma errors or really easy transition problems. And so a bunch of students get 60s, 70s, 80s, but you studied and so you crush this easy ELA section and get a 98. Now, how is that fair for your friend who took a really hard test getting a 51% and you taking an easy test and getting a 98%? What they do is they calibrate or they, what you might have known this as a curve, like curve the, the scores or the grades. But what they do is they artificially push up, pump up the scores of a hard test. So your 51% is now a 70%. And now that they pumped up the scores, we have a nice normal bell curve. They do the same if you get a really easy test. They push all the scores down. So your 98% is now just an 80% but it's a nice normal bell curve. So now we can compare this score to this score and it looks like, yes, this you did 10% better on this ELA section than your buddy did in this ELA section because since they're now in the shape of the normal bell curve, you can appropriately compare them. Let me show you how the score difference. Before calibration, this hard test A is a 204. And this easy test B, you get a 392. But after calibration, your score goes up on test A and your score goes down in test B. Only calibrated raw scores matter. That is the most important part. After they do the calibration, that is what matters. So this is what a scale score is. When you calibrate a raw score, that turns into your scaled score. Now, calibration is legit mystery. People will say they know how it's calibrated. People have been given hints or whatever, but the city does not tell anyone how or how much they move scores. This is a big mystery. So if I know that they move, you know, here they move the score down 18%, but here they move the score up 19%, they're allowed to do that. And they're the ones that decide how much they move scores up to fit this normal bell curve. So that's a little bit of what the mystery is. And the reason why they do that is this. Because they gonna, they're going to give like a bunch of different versions of the SHSAT on Saturday and Sunday in October. You might get a test form A where the ELA is hard and the math is easy and this is what your bell curves look like. And test B, the ELA is super easy and the math is also super easy. So this is what their scores look like all of the students that took test B, all the students that took test C, ELA was pretty average, and the math was super easy. A bunch of kids got a ton of great scores. And then test D, the math is average, and the ELA is hard, right? So how do you compare these four test forms? Well, you have to calibrate them, and you have to make them fit the normal curve. So that's why it is much more of a competition against your classmates than it is get a certain amount percent correct. Because if you look here, you're above average and you're still above average. Look up here, you're way, way close to the top percentage and you're still way, way close to the top percentage. Not that many kids are gonna have scores between 80 and 100, right? So that's how they do the calibration. Now, why this matters? Because once you put your let me, get it. Let me get this one out. Once you put your calibrated scaled scores together and you add them to equal your composite score, then that's what the specialized high schools look for. La here are, I mean, these aren't 100% confirmed. The, the schools themselves do not say what their cutoff scores are, and every year it's different. 
But here is a good approximation about what the schools are looking for based on last year's acceptance rates. So if you put STI first and you get a 555, you're going to go to STI, right? But if you put STI second and you get a, you know, let's say you put Bronx Science first and you get a 600, they're going to send you to Bronx Science first. So here's something that you can study um, to see what your goals might be. Again, it's impossible to know how to go from the raw score to the scaled score because the city does not tell us how much they calibrate or shift the bell curve. So just try to do the best that you can. I'm, I normally stick with the fact that if you notice where these are inside of here, this would be a 50% and this is 100%. 75% is right here. That's a C. So if you can get a C on your test, then you're looking really good. You just need to be a little bit better than about 70% of your classmates. Alternatively, the lowest score to get in has been said that, you know, around 479. Really, that's like a 60% correct. That's how hard this test is. But don't get discouraged. This year, it's going to be easier than it's ever been. Study my videos. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions about how the SHSAT is graded, I'd be happy to help you. Good luck.